Hello, um, I'm Dick Esterly, and uh, this is actually my fifth gathering. Um, I started in 2007. Was it? Oh, it was G4, G7, whatever day that was, you guys. Where's John Conway? He could figure that out and, on his fingers. Um, anyway, one thing, I'm glad to follow the Julia Robinson uh, Festival because I've participated. And I realized while I was listening that uh, Actually, the gathering is sort of like a big Julia Robinson festival. We all sit at tables with each other. We all exchange ideas. We all help each other out. And uh, I feel really um, grateful to have been a part of it. Um, <clears throat> um, also, I want to mention that um, uh, the last one, the G4G10, uh, I participate in putting together sort of a retrospective. And um, that was Tom Rogers' idea. And I just want to take a moment, um, I'm very grateful I met Tom, uh, you know, through the various gatherings. I didn't really know him the first one, the second one I did. Um, I did a sculpture that was out there in the art piece um, in the garden. Um, and so um, we just got to know each other and of course uh, what was supposed to be a very simple little exhibit of a few art pieces over at the libra library suddenly turned into 20 artists and a retrospective of when on, what went on, and um, it was uh, uh, quite a thing for me to take uh, part in, and of course it was um, very difficult and sad as, a way, as well, because we all know Tom died about a month later, and uh, he really cared about this, uh, obviously, because we wouldn't be here because of him. Uh, I know a lot of people here know him a lot better. Um, also, Sarah, Sarah, his partner, and his two kids, uh, uh, Buck and Amanda have been a big part of this, and uh, so I just want to take a second to just remember him, just a few seconds, and uh, um, okay. So thank you guys for that. Um, Second thing, I do have a John, Way Conway, a John Conway story real quickly. Um, I met John in uh, 1991. Uh, I was flying back from Pittsburgh. I had just invented, uh, while I was working, I I'd come up with this, which is called the geometry machine, uh, which if you can get a camera on it. Um, it came out of this where I did some, uh, <clears throat> this is a tensegrity model that's based on what Buckman Sir Fuller and Kenneth Snelson had done. And I'd gone home to make it, and of course, I started to organize, and I put a bunch of these uh, strings through the straw so that the shapes could change. And um, so I was working on the patent. I had about $1,000 left to spend. Uh, I saw John's picture in the New York Science Times. I said, the last thing I want to do is spend my last $1,000, and then I'm going to go show it to a mathematician, and they're going to say, oh, yeah, we've known about that. So. I got an email together. Um, I actually called down there. They said, well, John doesn't answer his phone a lot of times. I said, well, can I write him a letter? He goes, well, you won't get there. It goes, best is to email him. And this was 1991. I didn't have email. So uh, I went out and got a, an account. And he was probably the first email I ever made. So I said, I have this thing with strings and tubes and polyhedra. And would you be interested in uh, taking a look? And I got a response, come on down. And uh, it was that simple. I went down. Uh, we spent about two hours together. I brought in all my models, my box. Um, I had several other models because I had finally figured out that four tubes went through an octahedron, and then you could have three tubes, and they went through a cube. And of course, then you could have six tubes, and they went through a dodecahedron, and you started stringing these things out. And it got very complicated fast for me. So um, John spent about two hours. Uh, talking to me, but doing things on the board and figuring this and that. And we kept running, he kept running into dead ends and I'd say, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> and then uh, finally he put them all back in the box and he said, well, okay. So it was very nice and he gave them to me. I said, well, what should I do? And he goes, oh, whatever you want. <laughs> so <laughs> I looked at him and I was like, what do you have? Does it have anything to do with physics or something like that? And he goes, oh, that doesn't matter. <laughs> so, and I was just talking to him out in the lobby and he said, uh, he said, really, it's a beautiful thing and it really doesn't matter what it has to do with. And I really appreciated John and uh, he had me come down and uh, 
showing puzzles that I, I was very uh, new to the whole puzzle world. My background's art and architecture, so anyway, I did. And I'm going to give uh, maybe that puzzle at the end of the talk. or um, But that's enough about that. Let me start. I'm going to start that. But anyway, it's been, did I just do my, OK, my mic's still on. So here's my talk. Um, thank you guys for, for listening so far. So, uh, all right. So um, just quickly, this is an installation at the Children's Museum in Pittsburgh called More Light. It's 29 feet strips of of uh, surveying flagging tape and it uh, uh, makes a big tube in the atrium there. It's about a 29 foot tube and uh, if you ever get the chance I'll show it, come to Pittsburgh, I'll show it to you. So here we go, Borromeo meets Bucky in the Amazing Geometry Machine. So, um, oh by the way, Casper Schwabe says hello. He emailed me the other day, people who know Casper. Um, he's holding up a new bamboo thing he made. You guys probably know the names. Um, I met Ed Popko. He's got this book, uh, Divided Spheres. Um, you really, I, I'm, I'll hold it up, but you don't need the camera on it. Um, it's out on the table. He had written a book called Geodesics about Bucky Fuller. And I met him at, uh, I think, the Bridges Art a couple years ago. And um, anyway, he sent me something that Magnus Winninger had put together. And it was actually the idea that, um, uh, 60 icosahedrons will bond edge to edge, okay? And he just sent me a diagram and I said, oh, that's great. And um, I was able to model it and I use a program, you know, 3D program. Um, so the next thing I did was, I've also been interested in the Borromean rings. Um, uh, and I have something where I've mapped, I basically put four balls on the Borromean rings, uh, so that makes 12. Those are the 12 nodes of an icosahedron. So I said, great, I'm going to just plug it in. So um, here first is sort of the frame for the whole sphere. And then here are the Borromean rings with those. And in color, so the next thing, this is what it starts to look like in the computer. I haven't 3D printed it yet, but uh, uh, working towards that. So I did this for Ed. I sent it over to him. and. Uh, we just took a look. Now here's a, just an alternate coloring. And um, you know, it just, what's nice is you start to see the pentagons and the, uh, and the triangles of the icosadodecahedrons and several other things. So it's in three dimensions. It's not, you know, uh, flat like that on the surface. So you color it differently and you can see those a little better. Um, so then we come to Buckminster Fuller, who did a six strut tensegrity in 1949 after having Kenneth Snelson as a, as a student. And as you can see, this is basically, can you um, come in on this and then, uh, here we go. So, uh, six tubes held in space basically by these wires and um, uh, there's basically 24 wires on this and there's 30 edges on an icosahedron. And Fuller actually did his first one um, with a one to two uh, ratio for the planes that intersect, uh, which is part of the Fibonacci series. So it was on its way to becoming the golden, golden uh, section and the icosahedron. So anyway, um, now we can go back to the, to the computer. Um, okay, so here's a six strut. So I decided to plug that in. And um, when I did, uh, uh, well, that's a model. So here's a group of three, and you see, um, and I've and I've basically got a red, yellow, and blue plane. So you see those starting to line up, and here they are starting to edge bond, and moving it in. And this is a wire model, which I also have, but uh, you can see it there just as well. So what's interesting is the reds become the pentagons, and the reds become the triangles, and then the other ones are floating in space. Okay, so then we come to the amazing geometry machine. Uh, this is the four tube thing. And uh, having made that model, I realized I could actually string that same thing up in the same, same way. And now I have eight loops that are running through this in an XYZ. And if you look at this three tube one, which makes the octahedral, you have four loops here. And each loop runs through each tube and it runs on the XYZ plane. So now, 
in a way, if you look at both ends here, um, you have the four colors coming in here, the other four coming out here. So it, says, it suggests some sort of addition between the octahedrons becoming this icosahedron. And of course, if you know anything about the jitterbugs, these will start to collapse into the octahedron without this. Now, so now we have eight loops. And it's interesting, what's remaining that's not there is this space here. So I said, well, I should string this. So once you string that, I know. So when you string that, now you have three loops that are left. These three loops are actually the Borromean rings. So we see the yellow, red, and blue. So let's see here. I've got one. And uh, we'll just run through that. And so at the end, here's the Borromean rings. And 4 plus 4 plus 3 equals 11. So thank you, G4, G11. And that's the end of my talk.